Welcome to my Sterling single, part 60. These brake hangers are not right at all. They were too big and overscale for the engine. This becomes very apparent as I assemble them. I am not a perfectionist, I do not have OCD. We all make mistakes, like the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush and the Dalek climbing off the dustbin, but it's nothing to worry about, it happens. I know where I went wrong. These will be perfectly fine for a seven and a quarter inch gauge locomotive, but not for five inch gauge. I realised this very early on whilst I was assembling the parts. In this clip I'm using a steel rule to measure the distance between the brake hanger and the mounting because I'm going to have to make a bush for this to position the brake rods in exactly the right place. These drop arms cannot be held hard up against the mountings because if that was the case the inner brake rod would foul the wheel and this would happen at both sides. The answer to this problem is very simple. Make a couple of bushes, one for each side. This will prevent the brake shaft from moving from side to side. I'm making a pair of collars using this piece of brass. First job as always, centre drill it. Second job, drill all the way through. Third job, clean up the part. And fourth job, part it off. This is not really a high precision part, but the width of the collar is very important. This initial measurement using the steel rule was not correct. The collar was too thick. There was a simple fix to this problem. Just reposition the parting tool and start again, cutting it a little bit thinner. I only had to move the parting tool a very slight amount. This tool holder and parting tool, with a lot of it sticking out of the tool holder, really does amaze me. This is only brass, but I've actually parted off stainless steel with this thing. I shot myself in the foot really, I only bought this very cheap tool holder just to show how rubbish it was, but it's actually not rubbish at all. It's very well crafted. Before I fitted it to the machine I did two things at it. One was I machined and polished a bolt to hold it to the machine. The original Allen caphead bolt that came with it really did look bad. And I also filled it internally with grease to stop the parts from wearing. And so far it's been okay. Time will tell. I pulled a piece of brass out of the chuck slightly and used the first bush to set the distance for the parting tool. Whilst parting off both of these bushes, I used a file before I finally parted them off and they dropped into the chip tray. This is just to remove sharp edges. A piece of metal cut to 90 degrees is incredibly sharp on the edge, so bear this in mind when you're handling pieces of metal that you've just machined. That's why using a file or even a piece of wet and dry sandpaper is a good idea. Back now onto the workbench and once again I'm using this incredibly useful whetstone to clean up the parts. For years I've just used wet and dry sandpaper on a flat surface but this is so much better. My thanks go to my friend Andrew from Model Engineering Adventures for suggesting that I bought one. My whetstone inherited from my father broke a few years ago when I dropped it on the floor. Now it's assembly time and already I'm thinking that this doesn't look particularly good. Like the rounded off edges of the top of the drop arms against the round bushes. That was error number one. The fittings are too big for a five inch gauge locomotive. Perfectly fine for a seven and a quarter inch gauge locomotive but they look horrendous on this one. And it doesn't get any better when I look at the one at the other side. Really I should have stopped the job here, but from a tutorial point of view I thought it would show how everything goes together. Then when I make new parts I won't have to go through this again. I do not have the drawing for this engine. I looked at a copy of the drawing at Blackgate's Engineering the other week and I took a mental snapshot. In my defence though the drawing was a bit vague in this area, but I'm not making excuses for my incompetence. Error 2, the brake rod mountings are too short. And why is this? Well, I measured them wrong. I'm going to have to put washers between the brake rod and the stainless steel tubes that are turned. One washer at each side is okay, three washers at each side is not good at all. As I mentioned earlier, I should have stopped this job ages ago, but I thought I will carry on until the bitter end just to show exactly how bad it looks. The standard of engineering on this Sterling single is very good indeed, except for these parts on the brake shaft which are not the right size and don't look right. 
too big and too clumsy. I could insert a girlfriend joke here, but I've really stopped those, because I received too many comments from certain viewers. So now you will have to use your imagination. Why the big red cross at this late stage? Well, as you can see, the brake rods slope towards the brake hangers, and this is no good at all. Everything else is perfectly straight. Here I'm turning the locomotive round on the bench to get at the other side. It's actually quite heavy. I've been on hormone therapy for prostate cancer for six months, and it made me really weak. Since I stopped taking these tablets on the 5th of August 2024, I'm pleased to say that my strength is returning, albeit very slowly, along with some other curious symptoms. This close-up of the other side also shows how bad the brake rods look when they slope. I will rectify this problem shortly. That's it for now though, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.